Before we get started going through programming, I wanted to kind of take a minute to explain what the computer actually is doing when you run an, an application or when you boot it up and it loads its operating system. Um, to me, um, understanding what is going on when you're writing these programs will actually open up your uh, thought process a little bit and, and also allow you to start thinking about things a little bit differently than you might otherwise. The, the computer really is not magic. Uh, it, it really is very, very simple and very, very logical. Um, being a programmer really is more a, a aspect of being logically thinking or you know having the ability to think logically than it is being uh, brilliant at some particular language. Um, being able to to write a nice, fast, uh, useful application has a lot to do with being able to put yourself in the shoes of the person that's going to be using the application and then understanding what the computer is capable of doing so that we can go in and logically walk our way through step one through whatever it is that, that we need to have. So the, the first thing to, to get started with is what makes up our computer and what kind of things we're going to actually be working with. So we start off with our CPU, and this generally, in, in the sense of computers, is actually the, the case. Uh, people re refer to the entire case that has the hard drive and everything in it as being the CPU. In reality, the CPU is actually just a little chip on the motherboard. Uh, but they, you know, they call the whole processing unit the, the thing that holds the computer, the CPU. Now, inside of the CPU, we have memory that we can can take advantage of. And, and in today's computers, you know, that, that could be anywhere from, from 2 to, to 16 gigabyte and, and even more. Um, it kind of depends on, you know, how, what, what kind of computer you're buying. But we've got our memory that, that we work with, and then we have the actual CPU chip. And, and the CPU chip has a, a number of different things that you can take advantage of. Now, every, every computer that you buy, every brand of computer, every motherboard that you buy, they all have things a little bit different on them for, you know, working with them as far as writing a, a program. Now, at its very basic level, the, the CPU chip, it only works with binary. So it, it is sitting here working basically with a bunch of zero ones, zeros and ones. Um, so the, the computer itself can only understand certain things uh, in its language. And, and again, it's in binary. Well, as you can imagine, a long time ago when we started programming computers, it was really difficult to write a program that did very much because you're literally having to program everything out in zeros and ones. Now, at some point, they got a little bit smarter and they decided that they were going to come out with an assembly language. An assembly actually works in hexadecimal uh, form and has commands and things that you can tell the CPU to do certain things like moving a piece of memory from or an address from one CPU register to another register inside of the CPU. But the problem with assembly was that you had to literally learn assembly language for whatever CPU you were working with. So you couldn't write an assembly program and have it run on every computer in the world. It would only run on the one computer or the one CPU that you actually programmed for that particular language or that particular program. Now, in in the, the time that it was taking to do all this stuff, people started coming up with ideas of writing some or coming up with languages that were a little bit higher level than assembly where I could write an application and have that application run on more than one CPU or more than one type of computer. And so C is an example of a language that, that came out back in that particular period of time. Uh, you also have Fortran and a number of other uh, programming languages. Now, what these things do is they actually work through a compiler. And the compiler is actually something written in assembly that is more specifically tied to a particular CPU. 
And so what this allowed the, the people to do is they could write a program in, in English, if you will, or in a language that, that a person can more readily understand. And then when they get ready to actually run the program, they pass that program off to the compiler. The compiler looks at whatever the computer is that it happens to be running on at that particular moment and then encodes the binary into the form that will run on that particular computer. So it made writing software a lot easier, and we're going to get into the C programming language. I don't actually know Fortran, but we're going to get into the C programming language just a little bit to kind of explain or show how this works. But the C programming language actually allowed us to go more quickly from a, a language that we can understand into the CPU without having to learn assembly and binary and having to deal with everything in between. So. In Linux, for example, um, we use, and that's what most of this programming stuff that I'm going to be doing here is in Linux. Um, in Linux, we actually use a uh, the GDB uh, debugger and uh, GCC is is the compiler that we actually use. But all of these things are are written in more of a, a assembly level so that we can have a, a compiler that runs specifically on a CPU and then turn around and take our C language and then compile it into that binary form. So the, the main thing that I was trying to get through in, in this particular video is to explain that, you know, at the very core of a computer, it is very, very logical. It's just, you know, if this, then do that and you know looping through things so it's it's very straightforward and and simple uh, where the complexities come in are just you know managing all the different things that it does and being able to to execute these programs and make them do useful things you know it gets very very complicated but it's you know at, at its simplest form the computer really doesn't understand anything but zeros and ones